Hello, folks, and welcome to this event. It's fantastic to have you here. I'm Peter Haddock. I'll be your host for today. And uh, basically, looking forward to talking to everybody on the call. Uh, we seem to have a little bit of a fair interference at the moment. That's going to go away. So welcome, everybody. This is super, super exciting. Today, we have an event which is going to actually change people's lives. And we've got a lot of people here that want those lives to be changed. And so what we've got is an event for local people of all ages that will showcase the apprenticeship opportunities in construction from employers that are including Bamnuttle, Valfaviti Vinci, Flannery Plant Hire, McAuliffe Group, and we're going to hear from the National Career Service so that they can give you advice on how to get these apprenticeships. Not forgetting, we've got a specialist uh, that is in apprenticeships that's going to talk to us all about what are they? How do they work? Why do you want one? And why it will set you on the career path in what I love, the most exciting industry out there, folks. I'm a little bit biased. But hey ho, let's go straight into, therefore, a recording that we've made with Andy Street, who's been one of those people that has actually put so much effort as the mayor of the West Midlands into delivering all of these construction projects that are delivering all of these apprenticeships. So we're going to hand over to an Andy pre-interview that he's recorded for us because unfortunately he couldn't make it here today. Stay tuned, folks. More to come from apprenticeships from lots of different people and really, really exciting opportunities that are going to build careers and change lives. So it's over to Andy Street. Thank you very much. I'll be back shortly. Hi there, Andy Street, Mayor of the West Midlands here and delighted to be able to say a few words at the Careers in Construction event today. I'm just sorry I can't be with you because it's always brilliant to put a hard hat on, a jacket and actually take part in some of the activities. But sorry, I'm not there today. Now, let's just think how important construction is to our economic futures and the opportunities that it provides for so many young people across our region and indeed mature people who are retraining. Before the pandemic hit, construction was the fastest growing sector of our economy. And we know it was creating lots of jobs, indeed record employment levels across the West Midlands. And it's taken a hit as with all parts of the economy from the pandemic. But what we've tried to do is work hard to make sure that the big construction projects are absolutely intact and on course. And if you just think of some of the incredible projects there are across the West Midlands, of course, the mummy and daddy of them all is HS2. And we got the go ahead for that during the pandemic, the sign of the commitment to the construction sector. So that uh, one project will actually have thousands of jobs. And that's why we've been doing so much work getting people ready for opportunities in that project. Then there are things that are already committed and well underway, like, of course, the Commonwealth Games. That's also a billion pounds of investments. And I was lucky enough to go and see the Aquatic Centre out at Sandwell just a few weeks ago. And then there are some of the local infrastructure projects, whether it be University Station, the extension of the Metro, building out some of our colleges like the Institute of Technology in Dudley, and of course, all the works going on in Coventry to prepare for City of Culture. And the combined authority putting in more money than anybody else, 31 million pounds of preparations in Coventry City Centre. So we've tried really hard to make sure that where we can use our funds and bring in government funds, there are lots of construction activities going on. And it's brilliant to see all those sites now up, live, reopened. Indeed, they did a brilliant job to only be closed for a short period. So what we've also got to think, as well as having the activity there, what are we doing to get the training opportunities going? So what we've done in a number of the biggest sites, 
like the Aquatic Centre, like in Coventry, like at the Athletes Village, we've set up what we call these training hubs, where we give a commitment to local people being able to have basic training and then job interviews at the end of those. And also our construction gateway scheme has proven very successful already in taking people perhaps who've fallen out of another role or maybe were unemployed in the first place and actually giving them some opportunities. And it was brilliant to me go and see a number of those schemes out, for example, in Dudley, really practical uh, programmes there. And then, of course, as working with our colleges on making sure that there are the right opportunities there. It was brilliant to see the scheme up at Wolverhampton College, for example. So if you take all that together, we're making sure that the jobs are actually being created in the major projects. Then we're working with all of the providers to make sure that there is actually really great practical training available right now. And of course, on the back of the pandemic, we know there's going to be more people looking for those opportunities. So what I hope you will hear today, if you are one of those people, you'll hear from the brilliant providers who are doing all of that, and you'll hear probably from some of the people who've benefited from it, because there's nothing better than, I remember back in the winter, meeting uh, a couple of young Birmingham residents who were previously uh, actually homeless, and they'd come through one of our schemes and were now looking at a job with HS2. So, you know, it is genuinely true that there are some life-changing opportunities there in construction. So all that remains to be said is thank you for Peter, to Peter for hosting this, to all of the providers, some of the people who've gone through our schemes, and I hope you find it a genuinely inspiring day. Good luck. And there we go. So that's all the general stuff about opportunities in the industry. But one of the most important thing is apprenticeships. Now, I've always been an incredible believer about the value of apprenticeships, particularly higher level apprenticeships to challenge traditional degrees and get that vocational qualification that I reckon will see someone through life. So we've worked really hard to make sure that there can be as many apprentice opportunities as possible across the West Midlands. And uniquely, we've put a scheme together that we call the Apprenticeship Levy Transfer Fund. And what this does is it takes says to big business that if you've got cash left over from your apprenticeship levy that you've not used, you hold it in the West Midlands by putting it into a pool and then we then apply it out to, um, out to smaller businesses. And the brilliant thing is that before the pandemic, that meant that our apprentice numbers were growing about twice the rate of the rest of the country. And even through the teeth of the pandemic, we've seen more companies join in that scheme to give the funding for more apprentices here in the West Midlands. And you'll hear about some of those opportunities today. And of course, some of our colleges are doing a simply brilliant piece of work to deliver those apprentices as well. For example, working with South and City, Birmingham Met. I know that particularly Dudley College do an enormous amount around this as well. So opportunities there. So you'll see the providers, you'll see some of the people who've benefited from this, and hopefully you will be inspired to think about apprenticeship qualification, whether it be an entry level or higher level, that will set you up for a career for life in the construction sector. Whilst we're busy making sure that there are as many long-term jobs as possible in that sector. So thank you very much to Andy. Two really insightful pieces there about apprenticeships. And don't forget, folks, the most important bit about that second video was the fact that there's funding available for apprenticeships. So that means that people are going to be able to get more apprenticeships moving. So why don't we get this rest of this show moving so that we can talk about the apprenticeship opportunities that you're all here to see. And for that, I'm going to go straight to Andrew and Andrew's from Bam Nuttall. Bam Nuttall are a main contractor, Andrew, and that means you're going to have lots of apprentice opportunities uh, on your book. So please tell me all about those apprenticeship opportunities and how people can get involved. Hello everybody, my name is Andy Dorey, so yeah, as um, Peter said, I am the National STEM Lead for BAM Nuttall in the UK, so who are BAM? So we are part of the Royal BAM Group, um, we are civil engineers, quality surveyors primarily, 
can be one of Europe's largest contractors. Uh, with 20,000 people globally, we turn over £7 billion a year. So we are a really, really major player um, in infrastructure. And that's a really key point, actually, to mention infrastructure, because when there is a downturn in, in, in economics, such as now with COVID, the government are actually pumping tons of cash into infrastructure. And luckily for you guys in the Midlands, we have a real business need for young people and people in general, actually, from 18 upwards, to apply to our apprenticeship scheme. And there's, there's one really important point that I want to make. It doesn't matter if you're 52 or 24 or 18. The apprenticeship levy means that you can get an apprenticeship at any age and you can retrain at any age. So in the last couple of years, we have taken uh, people forward into our assessment days. Uh, and one guy was in his 60s, unfortunately didn't get the job. But it just goes to show that if you've got the CV and you get into the um, assessment day, then you can turn on the style. And if you're the type of person we're looking for, then you'll get the job. So two points. The first point is, have you applied? Dead easy. All applications for any of our jobs are carried out through our website. So if you've got a pen and paper, I know this is going to be shared later, but our website is www.bamnutall.co.uk. If you scroll down to vacancies, everything you need to know is on there, including something that I've been working on and has just been um, freshly developed is a career skills uh, module. And that is an interactive module to help you put together a, a world-class CV and a world-class um, application letter that you can use to either apply for Bamnut Hall or keep as a CV and an application letter on file to adapt and use for any other job that you want to apply for. We do recommend that you do that module before you apply to us. And yeah, like I said, it's on the vacancies. And what's really cool is that it's open now. So if you want to apply to us, you can apply to us right now by going on our website and clicking on vacancies. So the types of careers that we uh, look at, we look at degree apprenticeships, so from level four upwards. So the entry requirements you will need are at least C's in old money or fives in maths and science, preferably physics. If you want to be a quantity surveyor, business is also a preferred option. If you have A-levels or a level three qualification in construction, engineering or business, we're also look favorably on that. We like geographers, we like design technology people, we like people who've got computer science on there. As long as you've got the maths and English at GCSE level and the level three qualification that lends itself to construction, you could be the person for us. I really apologize if you can hear my dog barking. Sorry about that. So yeah, what type of work do we do? So we do roads, we do railways, we do infrastructure, we do sustainable environments. And what we really, really are interested in are people. We are a really people-oriented company. Now, what that means is we don't use the job as the carrot. What we use is your values. So we want to know what your values are. Do they align with ours? So we want people who are caring. We want empathetic people. We want people who think about the bigger picture. We want people who will put themselves and the team in front of personal gain. We want team players. When you apply to us, we don't want people just to say, I'm going to work in a team, for instance. We want people to say to us, I can work in a team. This is how I've worked in a team. And if you can relate that teamwork and those skills within teamwork to construction and civil engineering and things that I'm not all do, then brilliant. That's the type of person we're looking for. Now, it's really interesting when we uh, have people in, in the interviewing room and in the, on the assessment days, not a lot of people actually know what it is that they're applying for. So one massive tip I'll give to anybody that wants to apply to come work for us is find out actually what a civil engineering does. A civil engineer does. Find out what a quantity surveyor does, but then also find out what launch pad that qualification and that experience can give you. So for example, a really good friend of mine who I work with called Aaron started out as a civil engineer. Now he's one of our leading design engineering technicians. So he designs slip roads. He designs um, electrical cables that go underground under the ocean. He's designed some of the uh, work that we're doing down in Antarctica for the Sir David Attenborough board. They used to be bottom of both phase, or is the way from that. So once you've got that base qualification with us at level four, we take you from level four right through to degree right through to chartership so you can join the chartered institute of civil engineers and these it's popped out of my mind but the same one for quantity surveying once you've got that under your belt 
then that is you set for life. Not only in this country, but internationally, because what we're really good at in Britain is producing engineers. And if you've got a UK qualification in engineering or quality surveying, that is good enough to take anywhere in the world. Now, we are a global company and we have places in Dubai, Germany, Antarctica. The Antarctic one is part of the Antarctic survey. That You might think, oh, I don't really want to go to the Antarctic, for instance, but you will never experience that in any other part of your life. It's not a holiday destination. It's not like going to work in Germany. You can't just hop on a plane and go somewhere like that. So wherever it's remote, wherever the impossible is being done, you will probably find Bam Nuttall there. And what's really cool about working with Bam Nuttall is the family feel that we have, and also the fact that we work with lots of other people, including some of the people on this call. So if you want to get involved, get on our website, start looking for our jobs and get a plane. Andrew, that's fantastic. You know, and what I love about this, Andrew, is it's careers, it's people that you're developing right the way up there um, to actually have a really exciting impact in the industry. Andrew, I am sure you're going to get floods of people coming to that website. And remember, folks, all of the information and all of these websites are going to be on wmca.org.uk forward slash construction. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us today. Hope you're going to no fill those it's really, really quickly. Cheers. Right, folks. So that was Bam Nuttall, and they have huge opportunities. Those guys are massive. They're global. And so what's really exciting there is we need apprentices in the UK, but later on in your career, who knows, you could go anywhere in the world. But let's focus back now to the UK, and we've got another big, big player, which is called Balfour Beatty Vinci, Balfour Beatty Da Vinci is one of those joint groups, organizations that has come together to find a joint venture to deliver one of the parts of HS2, that really, really exciting rail project that's coming straight through the West Midlands region. And I am going to invite Victoria on because Victoria is another person that's going to tell us all about jobs for apprentices and how to get them. So, Victoria, please come and join me today so we can talk about these great opportunities on a flagship project, which for those apprenticeships joining will actually be game changing for them. Because, quite frankly, you get onto HS2, folks, and it's going to be super exciting for you and your future career. So, over Peter. to uh, How Sorry, are you doing? Peter. No, it's not Victoria, it's Kirsty. We seem to have some problems with Victoria's connection. So we're going oh, to jump to Paul's skit of a Flannery apprentice, no, a Flannery no plant hire. Not a problem okay. at all. Hey, listen, I know Paul, and he's a great guest to skip straight to because Paul works for a, a massive plant hire company called Flannery Plant Hire. And what they are super focused on in that business is bringing people into the industry to drive some of the most technology enabled and exciting equipment, but also folks to actually help run the business in the back room. So Paul, uh, great to have you on, great to be able to talk to you then and tell us what it's all about in the Flannery world of plant hire apprenticeships and what you need out there. Well, thank you, Peter. Thank you for the introduction. Um, well, uh, this is really exciting. Um, Flannery Park Hire are um, one of the largest plant hire companies in the UK. Um, we have three and a half thousand machines, um, and about 30% of those are now uh, hybrid or low emission machines. And in fact, we've just bought um, six electric telehandlers. So I know uh, Peter's going to be super excited about that. Um, but I think the main thing about Flannery is that we're still a family business. We're still run by um, the, 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 the brothers, uh, Paul Flannery, uh, Martin Flannery, and the managing director, Patrick Flannery. So and it's nearly 50 years old. So the largest UK plant hire company, over 3,000 machines, and we're a national uh, UK plant hire company. Um, but there is a huge skill shortage in terms of plant operators. So one of the things we've been trying to do about that is we developed a trailblazer group, which developed a new construction plant operative apprenticeship, which is now ready for delivery. And we are going to be taking on our, our new apprentices on the new trailblazer apprenticeship. And we've got vacancies that are going to be coming up in the next few weeks. So please do uh, watch out for vacancies on, on our website um, and on Facebook. 
and we were really pleased to receive your applications. So we want to attract new talent into the industry, and that's why we set up uh, this new trailblazer, really to get far more people into, into the construction industry from a range of uh, uh, backgrounds. So we want more women operators, we want more people from different ethnic uh, backgrounds to come into um, to operatives. So it's a really exciting time. We're going to be really busy uh, with Highways England projects and HS2, the uh, uh, um, colleagues have mentioned. So really, it's a, you know, there's not a better time to try and enter the world of, uh, of, of the plant industry. And our first uh, apprenticeship cohort will, will take place in, in the autumn of this year, and we'll have numerous uh, intakes throughout 2021 and beyond. So really exciting time. We take on about 30 apprentices a year. Um, primarily in plant operations, uh, but we are looking also to take on apprentices uh, in plant mechanics um, and plant hire control. So, and as I think as other people have mentioned, um, yes, we we're, we're, we're want to get this apprenticeship up and, up and running so people will come into the industry, but there's a career in, within the plant industry as well. So, there's a core opportunity so you can develop, you can develop from a plant operator. Into other um, modes within the company, and that could be on the hire side, it could be on the transfer or logistics side, it could be on the management side. So, the client operators is a really good way to get into the industry and start to train you while you learn. So, that, that's the difference about apprentices that you, you, you learn while you learn and you get the opportunity to, to, to become an expert and to ride on some of their most modern, um, highly technical uh, machines. Uh, the UK um, has to offer. So, really exciting times. I could say about operators, um, it's a really good career, but also the money in farm operators is really good. And you can, once you're an experienced operator, you can be earning somewhere between 40 or, or 50,000 pounds a year. So, it's a really good salary. Really exciting, you know, lots of different projects ranging from HS2, as I said, to Highways England work, to utility, to utility side work. So, really, it's a really exciting opportunity. Our businesses, they'll be available on our, on, on our website, that's www.flammaryplants.co.uk. We'll also have um, um, adverts uh, on, on Facebook and, and, and LinkedIn, I'm sure. But please do watch out for those in the coming weeks. Um, but really just wanted to, um, you know, give you the overview of, uh, of, of exciting uh, the, the apprenticeship opportunities are within the construction sector, um, but also specifically the plant sector. And I know Pete and I uh, know quite well about it as well, so we will uh, beat that drum for the trailblazer, I guess. Well, you know what, guys, the trailblazer is one of those schemes that is really going to make a difference in the industry. It's actually I, I really know the Flannery plant hire business very well. They do some crazy exciting stuff. They invest huge millions of pounds in equipment and they've got training centers. I've just been to one. The other day at HS2 depot near Colesville, they're building one. It's massive. They get you on simulators. They do all sorts of different things. So, Paul, we're going to hear a lot more from Flannery in the future. Certainly look out on their website and look out on their social media. You see lots of diggers in action. And you can go onto my channels and see them as well. Thank you very much, Paul. And we're now yeah, going yeah. right over to another person that's in the plant sector. And those guys have been involved in actually creating the space that we're going to have Curzon Street Station, which is the station for HS2. And I followed some of their work and they've uncovered some tremendously exciting historic things where they've remediated that land. And that means just bringing it ready, getting taking away any uh, remediation issues that you've got with soils, etc., to make that ready for the build. Now, we've got Anna Maria from McAuliffe joining us. Anna, hello. Great to see you. Great to see you guys have always been working really hard on lots of projects in the West Midlands region, which is your home and your hub. Please tell us what you need and what it's all about with your apprenticeship scheme. <coughs> Before you do that, though, Anna, I've got to say I met two of your apprentices at one of the events run by the West Midlands Combined Authority. What wonderful people they were. And I'll say to you folks out there, this is the business that if you've got the right attitude, they create their apprenticeship just for you. They did that for two people that had the right attitude. 
I'm sure you're going to do it for more, Anna. I'm going to stop talking now and let you explain everything about the apprenticeship opportunity you've got. Thanks for coming on. Morning. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Peter, for pretty much taking half of what I was going to say. Um, I'm only joking. Hi, I'm Anna Marie McAuliffe of McAuliffe Group. Uh, we're celebrating 50 years this year. Not going to have the big party that we planned, thanks COVID, but 50 years nonetheless. We're a family owned and run business founded and headquartered in the black country city of Wolverhampton. Special hello to everybody that's on from Wolverhampton. Uh, we clean up brownfield land, um, preparing it for development. Uh, brownfield land is basically land that's been previously used, you know, an old, an old factory or, or, or something like that. And we provide a complete in-house service for our clients who are mainly house builders and developers. But we also work, as Peter mentioned, on, on big government infrastructure projects like HS2. All, our, all, of our, all of the staff that work for us are directly employed. We currently employ 135 employees, so nothing on the scale of Van Muttle, Van Muttle mentioned earlier. Um, so we are a small, medium-sized business, but we, our, our employees have got a strong culture of taking pride in their job. Uh, our people really care about what they do, and we're committed to their training and development. We also invest heavily in technology. Uh, we've invested over £20 million in intelligent plant and equipment, which supports the business activities. Um, so we don't have to rely on hired in vehicles. Sorry, Flannery. Hired in plant and equipment and agency staff. Um, <clears throat> just to give you an idea of the kinds of projects that we work on, as Peter mentioned, we're, we're currently on HS2, uh, the Curzon Street station site. Um, with a first remediation contractor on that high profile site and the the, the fact that what we are we help the archaeologists on earth is just amazing the world's oldest railway roundhouse it's worth a little look on youtube it's a long video but it's really interesting recently we've completed work on a former ironworks as part of Bilston urban village on the outskirts of wolverhampton to do, to get it ready for development of 400 new homes and we've recently just started on a site in walsall uh, the former Caparo works for Lovell Homes. So these are all sites that hopefully they might be down the road from you. So now you know what they're, what's being developed on them. The types of opportunities with us, we're as a small to medium sized business, we offer fewer select apprenticeship opportunities than perhaps <coughs> um, the companies that I've mentioned before. Um, we want the right people to stay with us for the long course. We try and tailor it for each person. Um, quite often when you mention that you work in the construction industry, people think of brickies and, and, and plasterers, you know, the actual constructing, building parts of the construction industry. But there are hundreds of different jobs involved before you even build anything. Um, and we don't build anything at all. <laughs> we don't do any, we don't lay the infrastructure, we don't build anything. And there's a whole industry around that. So just to give you a few examples of the apprenticeships, which like Peter said, we kind of moulded some of these for the for, for the person that kind of came into our business had the right attitude and you know that the sky's the limit with these people but the plant operator apprenticeship thanks to, to flannery and everybody for trailblazing that plant operator apprenticeship um we really want to raise the awareness of brilliant opportunities in operating plants and what we mean by that are the diggers and dozers dump trucks and rollers you know the bob the builder if you can remember back all those kind of equipment but massive some of our kits like 50 ton um, and we did, we supported the uh, combined authority earlier in the year at their event, which, which highlighted the opportunities in plant operation. And it was really fantastic meeting. Hopefully some of you there. Um, my favourite bit was having a go on the simulator, but so much fun. Plant operators are the majority of our employees. Uh, it's a skilled job um, that can provide a varied and well-paid career. Like Paul mentioned earlier, it, it, if you're good, it's a very well-paid career. Um, we've worked with Wolverhampton College to bring their training facility to fruition and we're looking to get our first apprentices on, the, on their first cohort of the plant operation apprenticeship. I think they're hoping to start in January, so we're looking to get one or two apprentices on that. Um, our recent um, apprentice, Tom, who I think Peter met as well, um, he's progressed so quickly through our in-house scheme, but we're looking forward to formalising that with the college. So one day he drive, he's driving an excavator for us currently. One day he's taking a building down. The next week he's loading a crusher to recycle aggregates. And the next day he's loading soils onto road going wagons. So it's so varied. And that's just one piece of equipment. 
but not just plant operations. We've got a strong survey and engineering department. Um, we've got Lewis, who started with us at 19. He's completing a higher level civil engineering apprenticeship with us and the University of Wolverhampton. It's closely monitored with our head of engineering and is gaining invaluable project experience, particularly on HS2, learning about topographical surveys. You might have to look that one up. 3D volumetrics, how machine GPS control works on our intelligent plant. Um, it's just, it's an amazing, amazing uh, role within the company. And then not only that, we still need, you know, we've got quite a big um, administration team behind everything that works. So we've recently taken on a business, apprentice business administrator, school leaver who joined us, who's mixing, you know, valuable work experience with, with, with college classes. Um, so that's some of the young people that I've spoken about. And I just want to reiterate what Andrew said from Bam Nuttall earlier. It's not just about the young people. Um, it is often easier for young people to kind of change career because it's, uh, they've got less financial worries and things like that. But you can get on an apprenticeship at any age. Um, so I encourage anybody to, to, to look at the apprenticeships that are out there. Um, but for us to see what opportunities we've got available, you can have a look on our website um, or follow us on LinkedIn, uh, the company LinkedIn page. And that's 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 it for me, I think. Sorry. <laughs> Anna, that's not, that's not, no, sorry there. That's brilliant, you know, because actually, you know, you're really showing the strength in depth of a company that is heart is in the West Midlands Combined Authority. And having met all three of those apprentices that you're talking to, I've got to say, folks, those guys are super excited about the opportunity. And Tom, getting all of those machines and that, uh, that really insightful way in which the whole industry works from digging to remediation to, to all of those elements is fantastic. So thank you very much, Anna, and well done, McCauley, for trailblazing as well for the apprenticeships. Now, folks, what we need to understand is how many construction apprenticeships are there out there? What can we do to find them? What's in our region? And where can we go to find all of that information we need to apply for them? Thank goodness I've got Amanda on. Amanda, you know what's going on in the region with current apprenticeships. Talk to me about the opportunities that are out there and how people can actually grab them now and into the future. Amanda, it's over to you. This is the big one, folks. The apprenticeships are available now. Amanda, can we hear you? Sorry, I was left on mute. Hi, Peter. Oh, Thanks ever so much for a great introduction there. Um, yeah, I mean, at the West Midland Combined Authority, we've been supporting um, SMEs with levy transfer. Levy transfer is just a, an easy way, really, for the larger organisations within the West Midlands to don donate their unused levy. Um, this comes back through to the SMEs so that, you know, those SMEs aren't paying any extra funds uh, to recruit apprentices, which makes it so much easier for them just to take people on straight away without having to look at the extra concerns of the extra value for the 5% for colleges and for training. Uh, we support in all sectors, so not just construction, we support in all sectors uh, within the West Midlands. But um, as it's been said, an apprenticeship is a great way for people to be able to earn and learn. It's really difficult at the moment going to college, not receiving many benefits um, and being in the university and then having to pay back university fees. With apprenticeships, there isn't that issue because you're earning a, a good salary and you're working at the same time and learning and coming out with some really great qualifications. As it's been said, you can go on qualifications, anything from level twos up to level sevens and get those high degree apprenticeships as well. I mean, due to COVID-19, all our vacancies and all the vacancies that are out there at the moment are receiving so many applications. So it's a really, really key time now for you to sell yourself on your CV, get the help that Bam Nuttall are offering um, in order to ensure that your CV is world class and that you're selling your personal skills as well. Um, when, when it comes to routes for finding apprenticeships, there's various ways to go about it. I mean, you could take it upon yourself and get in touch with construction companies, look on their websites and find out what they're doing, give them a call, ask them if they're taking apprentices on, what kind of apprenticeship um, opportunities they've got for this year. A lot of apprentice vacancies um, are normally filled within by the September time, 
just because of the fact that um, the college courses um, and a lot of the training provider courses for construction um, tend to start their cohorts in September, October, but there are still vacancies out there for you to look for. The main routes I would say are through fine apprenticeship training, that will, the links for that will be on our website, the wmca.org.uk website. Uh, fine apprenticeship training carries apprenticeship vacancies from all sectors, so not just construction, but all sectors. But it'll also show you what the salary will be, um, what your hours will be, what breaks you'll have, um, uh, what holiday entitlement you have. So it'll give you a really good key to what that vacancy is before you apply. You can also use for construction specific vacancies, CITB. CITB, um, the construction body, they have a lot of vacancies on their website. Again, that link will be on our website, so you can go straight onto there. I do apologise, there are some roadworks going on outside, so if, if it's noisy, I do apologise. Um, but there is all different ways, and like I say, you can just contact construction companies in your area. When you speak to them, um, especially if they're small businesses, you can say to them about the levy transfer fund that's available um, and point them in our direction. And we can advise them on how they can go about getting that money so that they, could, they are not paying the 5% fees for your apprenticeship. Um, that, I mean, that would be your main proactive approach, really. Um, majority of construction apprenticeships are based on one day. So you'll find that you'll be working uh, your five-day week, but four days of that you'll be on site. One day is normally at college. Um, you'll have assessor visits where they'll come and visit you on site to see how you're getting on, make sure you're receiving the right support. You'll have tutor support. Um, a lot of companies now have apprenticeship mentors, so your mentor will go through things like um, what, you know, what support you're getting in the workplace, um, if you need any additional support with maybe your functional skills, because there is a functional skills element, uh, they may um, decide that you, you, know, you could actually go for a higher level um, and look at how your progression would work as well. As, it's, as we've said, there's, there's so many different levels and so many different opportunities within construction, um, especially with HS2 and various other builds that are happening within the West Midlands area. Uh, the construction really is a, a key area to, to look at, um, whether that be for male, female. I know a lot of it is tend to be predominantly male within the sort of brickies and construction industry, but there are a lot more females um, coming into construction now. Plant operations, again, is, is a really great trailblazer uh, apprenticeship that's, that's coming about. And, um, you know, that, that again, that's male or female. And also, the fact that it, you can be 16, 18, school leaver, college leaver, or you can be looking at a career change in your 40s, 50s, maybe redundant from uh, COVID or the effects of COVID and looking to, to change your career and to move into something more lucrative and more um, standing within the community and more what's on the priority areas within your community and within the West Midlands area. Um, don't think there's much more for me to say, um, except for get in touch with your local providers, get in touch with the construction companies within your area, speak to the smaller businesses, uh, hand CVs out, be proactive and just sell yourself. Because again, like they've said, it's all about the attitude um, rather than the skills you already have. Amanda, you couldn't have finished that off better because I think you're absolutely right. I'm going to say a big thank you to you there. But Amanda, I'm going to give you a little example of I met an apprentice that's working for a local business in the plant hire just a couple of weeks ago. And that individual walked past a site that they were working on. He took down their telephone number and their website. He phoned them up and said, have you got any opportunities? I'd love to be an apprentice. Yeah. And guess what? He's on site now. He's absolutely brilliant he's already just become the operator uh, of his dreams and that individual i've interviewed and we've got actually a wonderful testimonial from yeah. him so again i'll signpost that for the west midlands combined authority but amanda that was absolutely fantastic thank you also, amanda, great to see you've got some work going on uh, and people <laughs> outside doing some yes. so construction <laughs> is really out there doesn't it right now so and remember, yes. everyone, if you have joined this um, this part of this webinar and you've joined it to talk about apprenticeships, if you feel that there's someone and that business out there, it might be a small business that you'd be great business to work for, 
why don't you go and tell them that the levy is around and they can transfer it? And the other thing, Amanda, I really want us to all stress in this piece here, we want to double the amount of people in construction. Why are women not coming to their apprenticeships? It's a great place for women. It's a fantastic place. So you need all sorts of different skills and ethnic and diverse groups. It exactly. is a brilliant, brilliant and industry. And we also ever. we also have levy donors that literally want to pledge their money for women in construction, engineering, and for ethnic diversity as well. So the, the money pots are out there for them to get the funding. The money's there, folks. The jobs are there, folks. Thank you, Amanda. I'm going to tell you now by switching over to Deborah, actually the support that's out there, Deborah, for you to actually deliver uh, people to these businesses and actually, you know, to give them the support and say, hey, how could you approach somebody uh, to go for an apprenticeship scheme? And how could you tell them how they could get the money? to create one for you. So that's fantastic. So Deborah, folks, is from the National Career Service. Now, Deborah, you've got a little bit more time in this session. Deborah was on a previous session this morning. So I want you to go into some real detail on how people can get involved in the apprenticeship, what the National Career Service does, and off you go. I'm going to hand over straight to you, Deborah. Thank you very much, Peter. It's a pleasure to be here. Good morning, everyone. My name is Deborah Lissamore and I work with the National Careers Service. The National Careers Service is a free service across the West Midlands and England and we provide impartial information, advice and guidance that's personalised to you, the individual. We can help you explore all the various different roles in construction, that's apprenticeships, that's jobs, and help you create a plan of how to achieve your goals and also make informed decisions that will help you move forwards with your future and progress. We also provide information on training, courses, apprenticeships and jobs and also support with those important areas such as CVs, making sure you've got a great CV that is really tailored to the role that you're applying for. And also we can support you with your interviews, preparing for interviews and those important interview techniques. Also with applications for these both job roles and apprenticeships. And there's lots more as well. Our professional careers advisors offer ongoing support and you can contact us through a variety of different channels. So if you'd like to get in touch with us, you can contact us on our number, which is 0800 100 900. And that's a free number from all landlines and most mobiles. And that number is available seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. You can also find us by searching online under National Career Service. You can also follow us on our social media. And our handle is at Careers West Mids. And that's with a capital C on Careers, capital W for West, capital M for Mids. We work in partnership with a lot of different organisations and the colleges. Um, a lot of the colleges in the Black Country are offering the fantastic opportunity, which is the construction gateway. And this has been put in place to enable people to have and to develop the skills that they need for construction and also fund important tickets and cards, things like the CSCS card that will get you onto those sites and construction environments. We also work with Department for Work and Pensions and we've set up an initiative called the Construction Talent Hub. So our advisors can help you register on this hub and when registered you'll have access to all this wonderful information about the jobs that are out there, the apprenticeships and the training courses. So if in doubt please contact us and we're here to support you and help you move forwards into these fantastic opportunities into construction. Thank you, Peter. That's, that's great, Deborah. You know, I think everybody needs that little bit of help that, that they can go to someone knowing that that's free as well is really important because, you know, for me, you've got to get out there 
and get these jobs and you know you're going to be in competition with other people but if you can get that little bit of advice that little change on your cv uh, that's really going to help and so getting somebody that knows what they're doing like deborah and their team to do that for you is absolutely fantastic now folks we're unfortunately we weren't able to get victoria today from balfour beachy joint venture but she's informed me that actually all the information is going to be at the website w mca.org.uk forward slash construction for all of their opportunities. And remember, that's a great opportunity to join one of the JV partners for HS2. That on your CV, on your career building is going to be something special. So please, please take a look at that information. Now, folks, it's coming to the end of this session. What I just want to say to you is thank you very, very much to all of the people that have come on and shared their experiences with us. If you want an apprenticeship in construction, you really, really have got the best opportunity now to go for it. And really, I love this industry. There's so many and so many different bits of this industry. It's so diverse. There's so many people in it. And they're all really there to work as a team so we can deliver all these projects. If there's anything I can do to help you in the future, please also contact myself. All the information, though, from this session is on WMCA dot org dot uk forward slash construction i just want to say to all those people out there young and older that are going for their apprenticeship schemes that are right there right now good luck all the best for the future and hopefully we'll be able to tell your story as you go through your journey and your career thanks again for everybody involved in this and i hope it was useful and remember if you found it useful please make sure you share it on social media or share it, share the link via text message to someone that you think will benefit from listening to this. And remember, a career is what you're after here. An apprenticeship is a brilliant way of getting it. Thanks again, folks. And it's goodbye from me. Bye-bye.